My name is Flash Isaac and I'm a teacher from the future. When I was much younger, I saw thousands and thousands of people fail jam and unable to gain admission. This made me travel in time. Now I am back with the Flash Letter Jam app and a series on YouTube tagged 120 Days to Jam. My mission is to help you blast jam and as well get justice for everyone who jam has served breakfast. You are welcome to the 120 Days to Jam Physics with Flash Isaac. In this episode, we shall be looking at simple AC circuits. This is really going to introduce you to a lot of interesting concepts when it comes to electricity, direct current, and alternating current. So, no much talk, just take a look at it and tell me how you feel. Simple AC circuits. From wave, let's take a look at electricity. Electricity is simply the flow of electric charge. The flow of, of electric charge. Now, electric charge or electric charges can flow in one direction. Or, they can change direction periodically. When electric charges flow in only one direction, the current produced is referred to as DC. And when electric charge or electricity changes direction periodically, the current produced is referred to as AC. This takes us to the question, what is the meaning of DC and what is the meaning of AC? Now, DC stands for direct current. DC stands for direct current. What is AC? AC stands for alternating current. So, Direct current is a current that flows in only one direction. It can either be a positive direction or negative. So it does not change. So you can say for DC, here is positive or here is negative. On the other hand, alternating current is simply current that changes direction or polarity. Look at this wave. This is a sine wave. You see the wave moving, right? So this is the positive half, this is the negative half. Now, as this wave moves, here it is positive. Now, as it goes down, the other half, it becomes negative. This is simply how AC flows. It gets positive, it gets negative, it goes positive again, it becomes negative. It changes direction periodically. What does it mean? It simply means, as the current is flowing, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. Alternating current is everywhere around us. AC is everywhere around us. A very good source of AC is our electric socket at home. Now, if you've ever plugged TV, phone, charger, iron on a socket, therefore, you know what AC is. Is about the current from socket or the electricity in your home is simply AC alternating current it changes direction periodically now the lamp in your house the light you are seeing when you look at the light it looks stable in your eye but if you observe very well through a microscope or certain instrument you will notice that your bulb is going on and off on and off, on and off. That is how your bulb works. It goes on, it goes off, it goes on, it goes off. Because the current goes up and down. It changes direction periodically. That is alternating current. Where the opposite is direct current, which flows only in one direction. Now, there are devices that use alternating current. And there are devices that prefer to use 
direct current. So let's look at devices using AC and devices using DC. We have two types of devices generally in electricity or in physics. Take note of this. A device can either be electrical or electronic. Electrical devices are devices that use very high power. Once the voltage is low, it will not be able to power them. They require high power. These are electrical devices. Meanwhile, electronic devices, they don't require very high power to operate. Example of an electrical device is your air conditioner. Air conditioner requires high power. Your refrigerator, washing machine, these are electrical devices. Electronics, on the other hand, they are your TV. They don't require very high power. Your DVD, your decoders, your sound systems. These are electronics. Where am I taking you to? Most electrical appliances, they utilize alternating current. So, your air conditioner uses alternating current. Washing machine makes use of alternating current. Your refrigerator makes use of alternating current. Your pressing iron makes use of alternating current. Current. Now, when you have your torch light, the torch light makes use of direct current. Now, how about your your phone? Your phone makes use of direct current. How about your TV? Your TV makes use of direct current. Your television or electronics, they don't make use of alternating current. They prefer to use direct current. What happens? As the alternating current comes out of the socket, before it gets to your TV, it changes to direct current. In that case, it has been rectified using a diode. So diode is a device that changes alternating current to direct current. On the other hand, alternating current can be changed to direct current using diode, but direct current can also be changed to alternating current using inverters. Look at something else, or this is something you should take note of. Any device that makes use of battery, any device that uses battery is simply running on direct current. So any device that runs on battery requires direct current to operate. In fact, your TV remotes and many more. So long you put battery in the device, your laptop, so long it has battery, it requires direct current to work. Now let's compare AC and DC. Of AC, they change polarity, which means they can be positive in one half, negative in the other half of the circle. Now take a look at something. We said that your socket at home is a source of AC. If this is your charger, if you plug this charger this way, your phone will charge. If you turn it like this and plug it, your phone will charge. If you turn it again and plug it, your phone will charge. So your TV plug that has two pins, if you plug it one way, it will charge. If you change, turn it the other way around and plug it, it will charge. This is because we cannot really say that AC has a particular polarity. We cannot really say that this is really positive or negative because it alternates. It changes direction becomes plus before you know it goes back to minus but dc they can either be positive or negative they don't change so if you have a dc you have two terminals one part is the plus the other part is the negative once you reverse the connection it will not work so if this were to be dc here is plus and here is minus what you are plugging must also have plus and minus so if you take minus to plus it won't work if you take plus to minus it won't work Meaning, this, uh, uh, the poles or the charges are constant. Charge can either be positive or negative. Secondly, alternating current, they travel more distance and there is less loss. While direct currents, they can travel less distance and there is more loss in direct current. Next, electrical appliances use AC. I told you that in physics, an appliance can be electrical or electronic. Electrical appliances, they use higher power. Like in your home, you cannot tell me that your AC 
and your decoder DVD or DSTV are using the same power. You cannot tell me that your uh, TV, uh, a LED TV or OLED TV, and your washing machine or your fridge they are using the same power. In fact, sometimes your generator may not be able to even power your refrigerator or air conditioner. But there is no how your generator will not power TV or decoder or uh, to charge your phone or charge your laptop. So electronics they require lower power. And I was able to establish that electronics like your TV, your laptop, your decoders, they don't use AC, they use direct current. But the current from your socket is AC alternating current. So what happens? As you plug your charger, you see some part of your charger that is big or the charger head. In that place, you have different circuits and you have a diode. This diode will convert the alternating current to direct current and then feed it to your laptop, your TV or your decoder. And for direct current, the voltage is usually low. It's around 12 volt average. Then for alternating current, the voltage can be very high at 11 kVA, 11,000 volts, high tension, or to your homes, you use around 240 volts. What happens if you connect your charger directly? So take your phone charger or your laptop charger, cut the head or bypass the head, connect it directly into your socket. Your phone will fry immediately because it doesn't have the power to hold that high voltage the process of transfer converting ac to dc is referred to as rectification you use diodes on the other hand you can change dc to ac look at your solar panels at home when you look at some roof you see panels those are solar panels they generate electricity now the electricity generated by your solar panels is mostly direct current dc now, this DC is connected to batteries. So when you have solar panel, you must have battery. The energy from the solar panel is used to charge your battery. And remember, battery is a source of direct current. So after charging the battery, now for this, uh, your panel or the battery to supply light to your TV, to your fridge, to your air conditioner, because those ones, they don't use DC, it has to be converted to AC. So DC has to be converted to AC to be fed to your air conditioners, to your fan, to your refrigerator. So converting AC, uh, DC to AC, you use inverter. So this is the use of inverters in your home. Inverters, they are used to transfer the DC in battery to AC. So the battery is charged, stores DC, converted to AC to be used by appliances. This is because we cannot charge AC. Only DC has the ability to be charged. Okay, like we said, AC cannot be stored, but direct current can be stored and can be used to charge battery. You cannot use AC to charge battery. This is why even your laptops that have used battery, your phone that use battery, AC needs to be converted to DC so that your battery will even be able to charge. And once there is no light, the DC is, char is charged, then your battery now releases current to the device to function even without electricity. So AC is generated from battery or rectified by AC source and DC is generated by a rotating coil in a magnetic field. So check out my video on electromagnetic induction. You see how EMF is induced and you see the process of generating electricity under electric current. Alternating current possesses frequency, but direct current does not have frequency. Frequency is the number of oscillation per time, number of oscillation per second. While period in waves is the time taken to for a complete oscillation. So let's see some things here. Here is DC. Here is AC. DC deals with resistance only. When you are dealing with DC, you hear resistance. So you might have solved uh, questions in physics when you are asked to look for resistance. 
most of these cases you are dealing with DC. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current. But in AC circuits, opposition to the flow of current is not only by resistance. In fact, you see resistors opposing current, you see capacitors. And you see inductors. So the opposition of current or opposition to the flow of current offered by capacitors only or by inductors only or by capacitors and inductors is referred to as reactance. So you have capacitive reactance or inductive reactance. So when capacitors or inductors offer resistance, to the flow of current, it is referred to as reactance. When resistance oppose the flow of current, or when resistors rather oppose the flow of current, it is referred to as resistance. So in AC circuits, something like ROLC circuits, as you can see here, ROLC is simply a circuit that has resistors, inductors, and capacitors, which means the three of them are opposing the flow of current. When these three oppose the flow of current, the, op uh, the opposition is referred to as impedance. So impedance is opposition to the flow of current offered by resistors, inductors, and capacitors in a circuit. And AC can be stepped up or stepped down using transformers. But DC can only be stepped up and stepped down using induction coils. DC can be used in electrochemical processes like electroplating and charging of batteries. But DC, AC are not used in electrochemical processes. They are used to charge motors and for high voltage appliances. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been able to explain electricity. I've been able to explain AC and DC. Now, let's jump to AC circuits. AC circuit, this is very simple. AC circuit is simply any circuit where alternating current flows. When alternating current flows in a circuit, we see that that circuit is an AC circuit, which means any circuit diagram we shall be drawing, this shall be for AC. And in AC circuits, it can contain either resistors only, it can contain either capacitance only, it can contain either resistance, capacitance, and inductors. That is what takes us to ROLC circuits. ROLC circuits are alternating current circuits or paths where alternating current flows containing resistors, inductors, and capacitors. So up next, let's take a look at certain values in AC. Your understanding of this path will either be the beginning of your success when it comes to calculation in AC circuits or the beginning of your own doing when it comes to AC circuits. Therefore, this is where your open mind begins. And this is where your revision on waves begin. Watch my waves video. Very, very important. Values in AC. We shall be considering four major values in AC. The peak value, the instantaneous value, and the mean value, then the root mean square value. These are values in AC. What is peak value? Remember, alternating current, they change direction periodically or they oscillate, which means they are just like waves. In waves, You have amplitude, which is represented by A, and it is the maximum displacement from the mean position. And a wave equation is Y is equals A sine theta plus or minus phi, or A sine 2 pi F T plus or minus phi, which is 2 pi over lambda S. 2 pi f is w, so y is a sine wt plus or minus 5. This is equation 
for progressive waves. And the maximum displacement from the rest position is referred to as amplitude. And from here to exactly the same point in the same wave is the wavelength. And the period of wave is the time taken for a complete oscillation. If this is understood, then peak value of wave is the maximum value of current, voltage or power in an AC circuit during one second. So that is to say that just like amplitude is in wave, that is why that is how peak values are in AC. The maximum value of current, voltage or power. So if you take it like this, the wave, the current goes like this. So this is the maximum point it gets to. So this maximum point is the peak value of voltage, VP. And peak value can be represented by the subscript 0 or M or even P. So anytime in AC, you see I0, that is peak value of current. You see IM, peak value of current or maximum value of current. V0, peak value of voltage or maximum value of voltage. VM. E0 or EM, maximum value of EMF or minimum value of EMF, which are the voltage or potential differences measured in volts. PM or P0, maximum value of power or peak value of power in AC circuits. So take note of all this. It simply means the maximum value, the maximum value. I0, maximum value of current. V0, maximum value of voltage. So you can represent them with P as well, IP, VP, EP. But these are the common ways we represent peak value. From the name, peak, maximum, highest. Two, instantaneous value. If we know that alternating current, they change direction periodically. Now, as the current is changing direction, the voltage is also changing direction along the current so we know that when you get to this point of the wave it is the maximum point of the amplitude what and the direction is changing with time as you can see time is here it's changing with time if i now look at this point and i say or this point and i say young man can you look for the value of current here or what is the value of current here what is the value of current here so I pick any value, any place, and I say, okay, look for the value of current or of voltage there. What will it tell me? That is the instantaneous value. It is the value of current, voltage, or power at any particular time. So the instantaneous value of current is given by I0 sine theta, which means peak value of current times sine theta is the instantaneous value of current. So at any point in time, if you are looking for the value of current, this is the formula you use. Just like I did here, theta is 2 pi ft. So you represent, you replace theta with 2 pi ft. This gives you instantaneous value of current is I0 sine 2 pi ft. What does that tell you? If I give you the maximum value of current or the peak value of current, and I give you frequency and I give you time, you can tell me the value of current at that particular time. So if this is 1 millisecond, 2 seconds, whatever, this is frequency 50 Hz or 60 Hz, and you have the peak value of current, 2 ampere, be able to find instantaneous value. Don't be in a hurry. We are going to do a whole lot of calculations. Trust me. So similarly, instantaneous value of voltage is peak value of voltage times sine theta. And theta is 2 pi f t, the angle. So V is equal to V0 sine 2 pi ft. So take note of these formulas. And this is something you should know. When theta, when time is equal to period, you know period is the time it takes for complete oscillation. Time taken to um, for oscillation. Time it takes for a complete oscillation. That is period. So if time is the same thing as period. It means that the angle is 360 degrees. Look at something. This is a complete oscillation. One oscillation is 360 degrees. You see half here, half here. So the two half is one complete oscillation, something like this. 
So from here is zero degrees. Half half or half wave is 180 degrees. Full wave is 360 degrees, which means here is 90 degrees, here is 270 degrees, here is 360 degrees. So the time it takes for one complete oscillation is period. So if time or the time you are given is the same thing as the period of the wave, therefore the angle is 360 degrees. What do you do? You simply substitute the angle here. If time is equal to period, instantaneous value is peak value times sin 360 degrees. Which means in this case, you already have the values for theta instead of solving with 2 pi L t. Then when the time is equals the period divided by 2, period is 360 degrees divided by 2 is 180 degrees. That means theta is 180 degrees. If the time is period divided by 4, that is 360 divided by 4, 90 degrees. So it means your angle is 90 degrees. You simply substitute and solve. This would make a lot of sense later, but I would appreciate if it has already made sense to you. Then the mean value or the average value is simply the value of current, voltage or power over a half second. If I give you 113, and I say find the average. You simply say 1 plus 1 plus 3 or 2 divided by 3, which means the average, the mean number. So similarly, mean value is the average value of current voltage or the value of current voltage in a half circle. The mean value of current is 2 times maximum value of current divided by pi. That is 3.142. 2 divided by 3.142 to give you 0.637 so mean value of current is 2 i m over pi 2 times peak value divided by pi or 0.637 i m same with voltage or power then root mean square the root mean square is the value in which ac is quoted and it is value that gives the same heating effect with dc let me explain it in layman language. We know we have AC and we have DC. If I ask you to give me, if I give you a value in AC, let's say current in AC or voltage in AC, and I say give me the equivalent value in DC, that is root mean square. So the equivalent value, the equivalent value of AC in DC is the root mean square value. So root mean square is the value in which AC is quoted, and it is the value that gives the same heating effect with DC. So root mean square's current is the same thing as mean value of current divided by root two. So when you have the maximum value of current, you divide it by root two, you get the root mean square value. One divided by root two, that is 0 0.7071. So this is root mean square value of current is 0 0.7071 times maximum value of current. Root mean square value of voltage is maximum value of voltage divided by root 2 or 0.7071 V0. So ladies and gentlemen, values in AC, peak value is the highest value of current, voltage and power. Instantaneous value is the value of current, voltage and power or power at any particular point in time. Mean value is the value of current, voltage or power over a half circle and root mean square value is the value that gives the same heating effect with dc you keep hearing current and voltage are in phase current leads voltage leads current lags or they are in phase or they are out of phase these terms begin to confuse you this is why the next thing that shall be taken care of is phase phase so that when you hear that current leads voltage or the phase difference, you will understand exactly what they are talking about. Now, phase is a particular point in time on the circle of a wave form. If you are given two waves like this, wave A and B, if each of the waves arrive at the same point in a particular time, or they are at the same point at every particular time, they are said to be in phase 
Now, if they arrive at the same point on separate times or at separate times, they are out of phase. Now, look at these examples. Look at these two waves. You see this wave start from here, goes through this. This one start from here, it gets here together, they get here together and they stop together. They get to each point at the same time. Once this wave is here at 90 degrees, the other one is there at 90 degrees. Once they get to this point, which is 180 degrees on the wave, both of them are at that point, 180 degrees. This one gets here at a particular time. If here is, let's say, 5 seconds, here obviously cannot be 5 seconds. Let's say 8 seconds, for example. So they get to one point at different times, unlike here, where they get to each angle or each point at a particular time. What do we say? We simply say that they are out of phase. This one started at here, let's say at zero seconds or zero degrees. This wave started already. So this one did not start at zero degree. It waited a little. So both of them are not starting or ending at the same time. That is out of phase. So we simply say that wave A and B are out of phase. Now, by what angle? What is the phase angle? Phase angle is simply the angle at which they are out of phase. In this way, I told you here is 90 degrees, here is 180, then, no, here is 270 rather, 270 degrees, here is 360, 360 degrees. By how many degrees are these waves out of phase? Now look at here, for this wave, Remember, it's a drawing. This one was supposed to start at here to cut this one at the middle, which is at 90 degrees. So if this one is cutting this one at 90 degrees, then here it also cut here at half. It simply means that the first shift is 90 degrees. This is what I'm saying. This wave here is 0 degrees, 90, 180. So if another wave started from this middle like this, cut this one at the middle, then comes down, cut here at the middle and continue. It simply means that after every 90 degrees, that is when the other one begins. So this one started at 0 degrees. After 90 degrees, B began. So which means once A gets to 180 degrees, it will take B 180 degrees plus 90 degrees to get to that same point A has gotten to. So they are out of phase by 90 degrees or the phase shift is 90 degrees. Anytime there is phase shift, or anytime waves are out of phase, a question comes to mind. Which of them is leading and which of them is lagging? So looking at A, which wave started? So the wave that started or the wave that began or the first to begin is the one that is leading. Since wave A started before B, it means A leads B. We therefore say that these waves are out of phase, then A leads B. By what angle? 90 degrees. So wave A leads wave B by 90 degrees. For this wave, B started before A and they are, you see, they are out of phase by 90 degrees, as you can see. 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 and so on. They are obviously out of phase, but B is ahead of A, so B leads A by 90 degrees. And here, the first shift is 180 degrees. A and B are mirror images. So when two waves are mirror images, this and this, it simply means that the first shift is 180 degrees. And when waves have phase shift of 360 degrees, they are also said to be in phase. AC circuit can contain inductors and capacitors, or it can contain the three components, which is inductors, capacitors and resistors, which is inductance, capacitance and resistance. When it contains these three, it is referred to as ROLC circuits. Resistors, inductors, capacitors or resistance, inductance and capacitance circuits. Now let's look at a circuit containing resistance only. In this case, you see the circuit is only resistor. You see power. What happens? For a circuit containing resistance only, current is V over arrow. This circuit obeys Ohm's law. 
which is V is equals I R O. Now, V is V naught sine W T and I is I naught sine W T. Remember earlier when we are dealing with instantaneous value of current and voltage. If current is V over R O, it simply means that R O is V over I. Also, if V is I naught sine W T and I is I naught sine W T, it simply means that R O will simply be V not sin W T over I not sin W T, which is the same thing as V not over I not. What else happens in AC circuit containing only resistance? You see the diagram. The current and voltage they are in place. I already explained what it means for quantities or variables or waves to be in phase. And this is the phasor diagram. The voltage and current are in phase. This is an AC circuit containing inductance only. You see inductors L. So this is current across the inductor, voltage across the inductor, this uh, AC source. What happens? For, a, for an AC circuit containing only inductance, this is the diagram. You discover that the voltage started first, then the current follow. What happens? The current lags voltage by 90 degrees. Current lags behind, voltage leads. So since voltage started, we say that voltage leads current by 90 degrees, or we say that the current lags the voltage by 90 degrees. Phasor relationship. This is an AC circuit containing capacitance only. You see the capacitor, you see the AC source. What happens? The current leads voltage. You can either draw the uh, phase diagram like this, or like this. In this type of phase diagram, the one at the top, this is current, is the one at the top. The one at the top is the one that leads. So, for AC circuits containing capacitance only, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees, or the voltage lags behind the current. Now, capacitors are used for power factor correction. This is because they always have leading power factor. So, current always leads. They have leading power factor. Now, you can draw a phase diagram containing capacitors only like this. But in this case, instead of voltage here, current will be here. Instead of current, voltage will be here. Also, you can draw phase diagram for AC circuit containing inductance only this way. But instead of current here, you put voltage here. Instead of voltage here, you put current here to show the one that is lagging and leading. But any type of diagram you choose to use, for this, the one at the top here is leading. So you see I, this is for I. So I is at the top. V started from uh, zero. So the current is leading the voltage. Now here, you see the one that began first. The voltage started before the current started data, which means that the current lags behind the voltage by 90 degrees. In electrical connection, you can connect in series or in parallel. In series connection, they are joined together plus to plus, minus to minus. Positive of one component to the positive of the other one, negative of one component to the negative of the other one. That is series connection. In series connection, the same current will flow. The same current flows in series connection, while voltage differ. In parallel connection, the same voltage will flow but current will be different. So when you connect components in parallel, voltage will remain the same, then current can increase. In this case, this is series circuits. This class will cover series ROLC circuits, series ROL circuits, or series ROC circuits, not parallel circuits, not parallel circuits. I will release a video to actually cover parallel circuits, parallel AC circuits, where Restricting this class to series circuits because we said simple AC circuits. What happens? In series circuits, the voltage flowing is simply the sum of the voltage in resistors and the voltage in capacitor. This is the resistor. You can also represent resistors by this. So this is the voltage across the resistor. This is the voltage across the capacitor. So the voltage or the root mean square voltage or the Vector voltage or the algebraic voltage is simply VRO 
plus VC. So this is obeying Pythagoras theorem. V squared is equals V arrow squared plus VC squared. The sum or the voltage across the resistor and capacitor together is V. So the square of V is equals the square of V arrow plus the square of VC. V is equals I arrow. True or false? True. Now, this is what happens. Okay, let's say, for example, here is supposed to be V, right? Let's say I squared arrow squared is equals I squared arrow squared plus I squared arrow squared. Don't take this yet. I am trying to arrive at something. So if these are the various voltages, what happens? In this case, the resistance is the total resistance. Resistance offered by capacitor and resistor. So when capacitors and resistors are offering resistance, or capacitors and inductors, or capacitors, resistors and inductors, they are offering resistance, it simply means that we have resistance and reactance. Anytime there is resistance and reactance in the circuit, the resistance or the total resistance is referred to as impedance, which is Z. So instead of arrow here, it is simply Z. So the resistance here is Z. So here is simply I squared Z squared. Now this is resistor. So voltage across resistor is I squared arrow squared. There is no change. Hi, but here. Here, V is I arrow, but the resistance is offered by capacitor. So when cap uh, uh, opposition is offered by the capacitor, we have capacitive reactance. So that becomes S C squared. So S C is capacitive reactance. So for uh, this is the resistance offered by these two. The S C is resistance offered by capacitor. Arrow is resistance offered by resistor. And remember, in series, the same current flows. Therefore, this current, this current, and this current, they are the same. We can factorize. Factorizing, we have I squared, Z squared is equals I squared, arrow squared plus S C squared. If you are very good at mathematics, you simply know that dividing both sides by I squared, this cancels this, this cancels this. So, impedance, square of impedance becomes arrow squared plus S C squared. Z becomes the square root of arrow squared plus S C squared. What does it mean? For a current a circuit containing resistance and capacitance, the impedance is the square root of arrow squared plus SC squared, where SC is the capacitive reactance. And capacitive reactance is 1 over WC. W is 2 pi F. So capacitive, capacitive reactance is 1 over 2 pi F C. Inductive reactance is W times L. W is 2 pi F. Therefore, inductive reactance is 2 pi F L. So that is capacitive reactance, inductive reactance. Now look at something. We know that V is equals I arrow. Now this is the arrow, the resistance. This is V. So current in ROC current, in ROC circuit, will simply be V over arrow. So arrow being represented by everything here. V over Z. So the current flowing here will simply be V over arrow squared plus S C squared. So take note of that. Very, very important for our calculation. Now, for some, in some cases, you may not need to derive. So simply know here. Z is equals the square root of arrow squared plus S C squared. That's all. But if there's need for you to know how it came about, it is very, very okay. Similarly, this is resistors, inductors, voltage across the resistor, voltage across the inductor. The overall voltage, V squared, is equals V arrow squared plus V L squared. So, since we have resistance and inductor, resistor and inductor, there is simply impedance, which is the total opposition. So, here simply be I squared Z squared 
is equals i squared r squared plus i squared s n squared. So just like SC, SN is the opposition offered by the inductor, inductive reactance. So when you factorize, you simply have that Z squared is equals R squared plus S N squared. So Z is equals the square root of R squared plus S N squared. And the current will simply be R is equals V over the square root of R squared plus S N squared. This is opposition offered by the flow of current, offered to the flow of current in ROL circuit. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's see ROLC circuit. ROL and C, the root mean square voltage, which is the voltage offered by the various components. This is the inductor, voltage across inductor. This is the capacitor, voltage across capacitor. So, I already established that the root mean square volt uh, value is equals V square plus V L minus C square. Look at it. This is the resistance, uh, the voltage across the resistor. This is the voltage across the inductor. So, this aspect, this part is the reactive part. So, for the reactive part, you need to subtract the voltage to get the sum of this. To get the root mean square voltage. So take note of this general formula. You, you add the difference between inductor and capacitor to the one across the resistor. So this V square represents the one across the resistor. VR. So VL, the one across inductor. VC, the voltage across capacitors. If you understood what we did earlier, you know that this is I square z square impedance opposition by resistors inductors and capacitor so this is i squared r squared then here is simply i squared sl squared minus i squared sc squared or sc squared so this and this. So what happens? We can actually factorize. When you factor, when you bring out i, you have something like this: i squared z squared is equals i squared r squared plus i. The currents in series connection they are usually the same. So this is the same as this. And factorizing a bracket that has squared, when you bring out the current, it squares out. We you have SL minus SC squared remaining. So this is a very valid calculation. Since the currents are familiar, from here you can factorize the current as well. To have I squared Z squared is equals I squared R squared plus SL minus SC. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. When you divide both sides by I squared, here it goes, here it goes. You simply have Z squared is equals R squared plus SL minus SC squared. Therefore, Z is equals R squared plus SL minus SC squared. Ladies and gentlemen, this is impedance. In ROLC circuit, and from V is equals I R O, the current in ROLC circuit will be voltage over impedance. So the current is simply V over R O squared plus S L minus S C squared, the square root. So this is current in ROLC circuit, impedance in ROLC circuit. Now here we begin with energy stored in the coil. In the coil. So it can either be this can happen in ROL circuit or ROC circuits. Remember, ROL circuit is one containing resistance and inductance or resistor and inductors. In ROL circuit, the energy 
stored is due to capacity uh, inductor. Capacitance don't store the energy. In ROC circuits, the energy is due to capacitance. So energy stored in a coil can either be or we ask ourselves, the circuit, is it ROL circuit or is it ROC circuit? If it is an ROL circuit, the energy stored is 1 over 2 Li squared, where L is the value of the inductor, I is current. Energy stored in ROC circuit E is equals half C V squared. C is the capacitance or capacitor. V is the voltage square of the voltage. We shall come to this in calculation. Now, power stored in AC circuits. Power stored in AC circuits can either be instantaneous power, purely resistive circuit, or for non purely resistive circuits. Now, instantaneous power in AC circuit is I naught, G naught, sine square theta. Remember, power P is equals IV. The I here is peak value of current. The V here is peak value of voltage. This is simply I naught sine WT or I naught sine theta times V naught sine theta. So once you multiply, you should get I naught V naught sine squared theta. This is instantaneous power. If you are asked to look for instantaneous power, then purely resistive circuit. For purely resistive circuit, the current and voltage are in phase. When current and voltage are in phase, power is I squared arrow, I V or V squared arrow. This is the same thing as I one over two I naught arrow or 1 over 2 i naught v naught or 1 over 2 v naught square over arrow this is power stored p is equals i v so half i naught square arrow half i naught v naught but don't forget these ones they are very important p is equals i v v is equals i arrow so here will be i v i i arrow that is I squared arrow. This and this are gotten from here. And from V is equals I arrow. And for no purely resistive circuit, which is the current and the voltage are not in phase. In that case, power is I V cos phi. Or power is I naught over root 2 or V naught over root 2 cos phi. Or power is 1 over root 2 I naught V naught cos phi. The reason I'm not explaining this aspect deep is because I've taught all this under values in AC, instantaneous, peak value, root mean square, mean value. So, power dissipated in AC circuit is I squared arrow. How come we are not adding capacitance and inductance? This is because power is dissipated through resistors only. Power is not dissipated in capacitors and inductors. So power dissipated for non purely resistive circuit is I squared arrow. So with this, we are done with this. This is power factor. Power factor is true power over apparent power. True power over apparent power. And true power is the same thing as wattage power. Wattage power is power in watts over volt amp power. Volt and power is power in like kVA. You see 2 kVA, 3.5 kVA, 4 kVA. So that is actually VA power, volt amp. And this is something as average power over root mean square power. So wattage power is IV cos phi. True power is IV cos phi. Apparent power is current times voltage. Volt amp power is current times voltage. And from here, IV cancels IV. Power factor is simply cos phi. So this is exhaustive. Power factor is cos phi. It is true power over apparent power. So all these are very important. Anyhow calculation comes, you know the one to apply. And this takes us to resonance in AC circuit. What is resonance? In AC circuit, resonance is simply the point where inductive reactance is equals capacitive reactance. That is resonance. When inductive reactance is equals capacitive reactance, 
we say that the AC circuit is at resonance. Other things happen at resonance. But let's see something. If inductive reactance is equals capacitive reactance, and I told you that inductive reactance SL is WL, and capacitive reactance SC is 1 over WC. From waves, or generally, angular velocity W is equals to pi F. This means inductive reactance is 2 pi F L. 2 pi L L. Capacitive reactance will be 1 over 2 pi F, then C. This is W, this is W. If this happens, what do we have? This is the same thing as 2 pi F L times 2 pi F C is equals 1. What S do you see there? This is the same thing as 2, two times 2 is 4. 4 pi squared F where LC is equals 1. I think this makes a lot of sense to me. Now, what is this? This is something as F squared is equals 1 over 4 pi squared LC. I think it makes sense to me. To get F, you look for the square root of both sides. So F is simply the square root of 1 over 4 pi square lc. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of pi squared is pi. So f is simply equals 1 over 2 pi square root of 1 over lc. So this frequency is referred to as resonance frequency. What is resonance frequency? Resonance frequency is the frequency at which the inductive reactance is equals capacitive reactance. So at resonance, inductive reactance is equals capacitive reactance. F is equals 1 over 2 pi root 1 over LC. Power factor is unity, is 1, which means at resonance, the true power is equal to the apparent power. And at resonance, current and voltage are in phase or the phase angle is zero degrees. And at resonance, the impedance is equal to the resistance. Because if for impedance, you have the square of SL minus SC squared. If they cancel out, you have zero, which means you are left with only resistance in the circuit. So impedance is equal to resistance. So these are the factors for resonance. And I've explained power factor and other stuffs. Now let's see calculations in AC circuits. Simple AC circuits calculation. The first question says, find the peak value of a sinusoidal current when the root mean square value of the current is 30 ampere. Earlier, we are able to establish that the peak value of voltage is the root mean square value of voltage is peak value of voltage over root 2. We are also able to establish that the root mean square value of current is equals the peak value of current over root 2. Now we are told that the root mean square value of the current is 30 amp. So I R O M S is equals 30 amp. What are we looking for? I naught. From this relationship, I naught is equals I root mean square times root 2. Cross multiplying. This will simply give you 30 times the square root of 2. This is equals 30 root 2. So when you multiply this, anything you get is your peak value of current. Simple, right? Let's look at the next question. The next question says, at what frequency would a 10 Henry inductor have a reactance of 2000 watts? 
No. This should be ohms. The unit of reactance is ohms. The unit of inductor or inductance is Henry. Now, they are told that at what frequency would a 10 Henry inductor L is equals 10 Henry have a reactance of 2000 ohms. Remember, inductive reactance SL is equals 2 pi FL. It therefore means that frequency is equals inductive reactance over 2 pi L. Dividing both sides by 2 pi L. Now we have the value of the inductor. We have the value of inductive reactance, which is 2000 ohms. The value of the frequency at which a 10 Henry inductor have a reactance of 2000 ohms is simply 2000 over 2 times 3.142 times 10. This is 200 over 2 times 3.142 hertz. A 240 volt supply is connected with a resistor of 20 ohms in AC circuit. Find the current and phase angle. Before we look at that, this is the same thing as F is equals 200 over 2 pi, since pi is approximately 3.142 in radians. So this will give you 100 over pi. So if you are solving this in terms of pi, you simply have 100 over pi. That should give you 31.82 or so. Analyzing this circuit, it has AC source, it has resistor. That is basically it. This is simply a purely resistive circuit. And what did I tell you about a purely resistive circuit? I said that in a circuit, in an AC circuit, containing only resistor or only resistance, the current and the voltage are in phase. That simply means that the phase angle is zero degrees. When they are in phase, the phase angle is zero degrees. There are questions you need not think or solve. Since it's a circuit containing only resistor and AC source, the current and voltage are in phase. So phase angle is zero degrees. Now, let's say we should look for current and since this is a purely resistive circuit it obeys ohm's law in according to ohm's law v is equals i arrow current will simply be voltage over resistance and the voltage is an ac voltage which is 240 volts resistance is 20 ohms so 240 volts over 20 ohms so this will give you 12 ampere that is the value of the current. And the next question. In a radio circuit. Now, transmitting and receiving in radio is possible or is an application of resonance. I explained resonance earlier. A point where inductive reactance is equal to the capacitive reactance. So in this radio circuit, the AC voltage across a resistor is given by V is equals 4 sin 60 pi t. Find the frequency. Find the root mean square voltage and DC equivalent. We are given the radio circuit, the voltage across the resistor to be this. We are asked to find the frequency and the root mean square value of the voltage now when you see voltage with sign or current with sign what did i explain i explained that they are the instantaneous value the value of current or voltage at any given time so given this the general formula for instantaneous voltage is v is equals 
V naught sine wt, which is the same thing as V naught sine 2 pi ft. Since w is equals 2 pi f, comparing this and this, the peak voltage is simply 4 volts. V naught, V naught. And everything here is the same thing as everything here. It therefore means that 60 pi t is equals 2 pi ft. If you follow my video on waves, this will make a lot of sense to you. Whether you follow or not, from this explanation, from this relationship, and from the formulas I derived earlier, they make a lot of sense. From here, if we divide here by pi t, we divide here by pi t, pi t cancels pi t, pi t cancels pi t, therefore, 60 is equals to f. F becomes 60 divided by 2. This is 30 Hz. We found the frequency. Recall, or from question number 1, V naught, V root mean square, is equals V naught over root 2. It therefore means that the root mean square value is simply equals the peak value of voltage 4 over root 2. The next question says, and the DC equivalent. Remember I told you that the root mean square value is simply the DC equivalent to AC. So root mean square simply means if AC value is a particular, if AC is a particular value or the AC voltage is a particular value, what is the DC equivalent? So DC equivalent is the same thing as root mean square value. So the DC equivalent of current is root mean square value of current. The DC equivalent of voltage is root mean square value of voltage. And the next question says that an AC supply lights a lamp with the same brightness as 12 volt battery. What is the peak voltage? First of all, we are asked to look for V naught. But look at the other explanations. An AC supply lights a lamp with the same brightness as 12 volts. Now, 12 volts is DC voltage. DC voltage is 12 volts. And we are simply looking for the AC equivalent of this DC voltage. Remember, V root mean square is equals V naught over root 2. This root mean square value of voltage is the DC equivalent of the voltage. It simply means that this is the root mean square. In AC circuit, when you are given DC value, it is simply the root mean square value. DC current, I root mean square. DC voltage, V root mean square. So 12 volts is equals V naught over root 2. V naught is simply equals 12 times root 2. So that is the peak value. An alternating potential of 110 volts and 50 cycles frequency is applied to a circuit containing a resistance of 200 ohms. Inductor of 5 Henry and capacitor of 2 microfarad. Calculate the maximum current in the circuit. Calculate the maximum current in the circuit. When you are given questions in simple AC circuits, don't be scared of the length. Analyze and pick out the data. Also take note of the keywords. It says an alternating potential of 110 volts. That is to say an AC source or alternating current of 110 volts which is the voltage V is equals 110 volts and 50 cycles frequency. Frequency is simply the number of cycles per second. So if it covers 50 cycles frequency, it simply means that the frequency F is equals 50 Hz. And next it says 
is applied to a circuit containing a resistance of 200 ohms. So R for this circuit is 200 ohms. Inductor of 5 Henry. So L is equals 5 Henry. And a capacitor of 2 microfarad. So C is equals 2 microfarad. We are asked to calculate the maximum current in the circuit. So the maximum current in the circuit from V is equals IR. So the current will be voltage over the resistance. That is maximum current. But what are we dealing with? We are dealing with a circuit containing resistor, inductor, and capacitor. This is ROLC circuit. And for a, resist, a, a circuit containing resistor, inductor, and capacitor, we have opposition to the flow of current offered by these three components. And that opposition is referred to as impedance. Therefore, the current will be the voltage over impedance instead of the resistance. Now, what do we have here and what do we not have? From here, we have... We are looking for the current. We have the voltage to be 110 volts, but we don't have the impedance. We can always look for impedance in AC circuits or impedance in our LC circuits. Like I told you, don't learn to forget. Earlier, we derived that impedance in our LC circuit is simply the square root of resistance squared plus bracket S. L minus FC or squared. This is the formula for impedance in ROLC circuits. Impedance is equal to square root of the square of resistance plus bracket SL minus SC, where SL is the inductive reactance. And I told you that inductive reactance is equal to pi SL. And capacitive reactance SC is equal to 1 over. By FC. Let's look at inductive reactance. For inductive reactance, 2 pi FL, we have the L, which is the value of the inductor, to be 5 Henry. We have frequency to be 50 Hz. So SL is simply 2 pi times 50 times L. For this, we have 1 over 2 pi Fc, so capacitive reactance is simply equals 2 pi times 50 times C is 2 microfarad. When we are giving capacitors in microfarad, we simply convert to farad. How do you do that? You multiply by 10 raised to the power of minus 6. So here we have 2 times 10 to the power of minus 6. The inductive reactance is 500 pi, and pi is 22 over 7. 500 times 22 over 7 is 1571.4 ohms. Reactance is measured in ohms because they are opposition to the flow of current. Capacitive reactance will give us 1590.9 ohms. That is 1 over 2 pi times 50 times 2 times 10 to the power of minus 6. Take pi to be 22 over 7. So from here, I think we have everything we need to look for impedance. Impedance is equals arrow squared 200 squared minus SL 1571.4 minus 1590.9 squared. So impedance is equals the square root of 200 squared minus bracket open 1571.4 minus 1590.9 bracket close squared. Solving this, you should get 200.95 ohms. And remember, current is voltage over impedance. Voltage is 110 volts, 
impedance now is 225. So this will give you 0 0.55 amps. Therefore, an alternating potential of 110 volts and 50 cycles frequency applied to a circuit containing resistance, inductor, and capacitor. 200 ohms, 5 Henry, and 2 microfarad respectively. The maximum current in the circuit is 0 0.55 ampere. This question says, find the resonance frequency. We are given a circuit containing resistor, capacitor, and inductor. We are asked to look for the resonance frequency. Remember, resonance frequency is equals 1 over 2 pi root 1 over LC. We derived this formula earlier. So what is the value of L in this circuit? L is equals 8 milli Henry. And this is 8 times 10 to the power of minus 3 Henry. To convert milli Henry to Henry, you multiply by 10 raised to the power of minus 3. Then, the value of the capacitor C is equals 5 microfarad. This is simply 5 times 10 to the power of minus 3 farad. So with this, we have everything we need to find the resonance frequency. We don't need this guy and we don't need the resistance. Therefore, the frequency is equals 1 over 2 pi 1 over inductor 8 times 10 to the power of minus 3 times 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So solving this, you should arrive at 2500 over pi hertz. You can choose to break, break it down further by taking pi to be 22 over 7. So this is the resonance frequency. And this question says, an AC supply of 240 volts is connected across a capacitor of 5 microfarad and the resistance of 50 ohms in series at 50 Hz. Find the capacitive reactance, impedance, supply current, and power factor. So looking at this equation, AC supply V is equals 240 volts across a capacitor of 50 microfarad. So the capacitor used is equals 5 microfarad. This is simply 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6 farad. And the resistance of 50 ohms. So we use a resistor of 50 ohms in series at 50 hertz frequency is equals 50 hertz find okay looking at this circuit we have capacitor and we have the resistor this is simply an roc circuit a circuit containing the capacitor and the resistor where reactance in this type of circuit is simply the capacitive reactance. Why? The resistance will not react. So it is only inductors and capacitor that possess reactance. The resistor possesses resistance, which they've already given us 50 ohms. The reactance in this circuit, capacitive reactance, is equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. And this is simply 1 over. 2 times 22 over 7 times 50 times C is 5 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So we'll drop the value of that soon. The next one says find the impedance. Impedance here is the opposition to the flow of current offered by a capacitor and resistor. So impedance in this circuit is simply the square root of arrow squared plus AC squared. We saw, since we have just resistors and capacitor, the one we saw earlier, we have resistor, capacitor, and inductor. Therefore, we subtracted the inductive reactance from capacitive 
we subtracted the capacity reactance from inductive reactance and squared. But here we have just AC, so it remains. If it were a circuit containing the resistor and inductor, here will simply be inductive reactance squared. So take note of how to find impedance in a circuit containing just two of the components. The next question says, find the supply current. And this one says, find the power factor. From V is equals I R O, current will simply be voltage over resistance. In this case, voltage over impedance. And here, R O is already 50 ohms. SC will be the value we shall arrive at here. And the impedance will be the value we shall arrive at here. The final question says, find the power factor. D, power factor is equals the resistance over the inductance is equals cos phi. So resistance over inductance is the same thing as cos phi. Cos phi is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's drop the values. To save time, I've simplified the uh, values. The value of capacitive reactance is 636.62 ohms. The value of impedance is 638.58 ohms. The value of current is equals root mean square voltage over the resistance. This should give you 0.376 ampere. And power factor is the resistance over impedance. This is cos theta is 50 over 638.58. And that should give you 0.785. Power factor does not have unit because it is the ratio of the same quantity. Now, in this type of question, if you are asked which one leads and which one lags, what would you say? In this case, we have a circuit containing resistor and capacitor. So current will lead the voltage or voltage will lag behind the current. Now, at what degrees? We are told that cos theta is 0.0785. If cos theta is 0.0785, theta will simply be cos inverse of 0.0785. And that will give you 85.5 degrees. So the voltage lags behind the current by 85.5 degrees. Or we can say the current leads the voltage by 85.5 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot solve all the questions in the world in one video. So with this, we come to the end of this class. More Ladies questions. and gentlemen, this brings us to the end of this episode. I hope you found something helpful. Feel free to let me know how you feel using the comments box. Don't fail to tell others about the Flash Learners YouTube channel. See ya in the next episode.